What's up everyone, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. Got another video here. I got a week to get this thing up in the air for the VHF contest day, June uh, 10th or yeah, June 10th Saturday. I've been really wanting to, to be big on that. So you've seen before the video of my Kushcraft 13B2, uh, 13 element, two meter Yagi, and I picked this up because I need something good for six. I do have the high gain that does have six meters, but it's a little deaf because uh, the six meter stub is on the very bottom and I don't have the antenna up high enough. So I have used the high gain vertical on six, but I need something with power. And this right here is the high gain LFA 6M4EL. It's a six meter four element loop fed array, loop fed antenna. Um, so it, it's a little bit different than the traditional dipole fed uh, six meter Yagi because it uses a full wave square loop on six meters for the driven element. And with the combination of that and the way the antenna is designed, a low noise off the side, a low noise off the, the lobes of the pattern, a better front to back ratio. And uh, of course you might have seen in previous videos, I need that with the noise I got here. So this thing right here, I was thinking about the five element, but I think the four element will do just fine. Uh, and the size is not going to be uh, monstrous, so I can put it on my mast above my Kushcraft 13B2. Uh, peak gain 10.76. It handles 5kW power. Now, I'm only going to be using 100 watts into this, but with the gain, that'll be just plenty for me. When you, If you don't know, uh, coming up after this video and some other ones, uh, some explanations and, and uh, you know some facts about 6 meters on a video because 6 meters is just one of my favorite bands. I love VHF. 6 meters, you can use 5 watts on a good day. When it's open, it's open. It's the propagation, not the antenna or the power you have. So you don't have to have something like this to do well on 6 meters, but I wanted to have a, uh, a nice beam with a rotator so I can steer that thing and make some good contacts on 6 meters when it's open. Um, so the... The boom length is 13 feet and uh, it only weighs 8 pounds, so it's not that heavy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thing together. It doesn't look as involved as the 13B2, there's less elements. I'm going to put this thing together, um, set it up here, hopefully uh, run the analyzer on it and see what the uh, the SWR looks like. Hopefully it's you know good right at the, uh, the side beam portion where I want it. And let me show you real quick where I'm going to be putting this and then we'll get into it. All right, so here's the mast currently. I have a mast with my rotator uh, and the 13B2 on top of it at a 45 degree angle. And I did that because a lot of people were saying, uh, suggesting that if I put it at a 45, I'll get some horizontal and some vertical polarization, which was the case, but I, th I think I need most gain on horizontal because that's where everybody's gonna be running on a two meter sideband. So uh, I'm gonna lower this uh, two meter down just a little bit and put the six meter above it. And hopefully the capture area with the space in between doesn't interfere uh, with this antenna. But then I'll, I'll raise this mast a little bit more and uh, you know have this thing where I can steer both of them at the same time. Well, it never fails that it's gonna rain while I'm trying to put this together on my only day off. But I guess it doesn't matter if it gets wet, I just gotta uh, get it in between the rainstorms. So the rain just doesn't want to quit out here, so I'm putting it together for you guys in the rain. Uh, I got a break here, so I'll show you. So I got the the rear reflector on so far. Um, it's very important when you put the, well, first off, what I've noticed is when you put these together, you want to put these brackets right here together on the boom because then you gotta keep sliding them off and sliding them on. There's, there's one, two, three before the center bracket there. Um, then there's two in front of it. So you wanna you know, put them together on here because I did that several times. Also, it's very important the distance, two inches between here and here, and then 26 and a half inches between the end here and that driven element there. And then, you know, the different spaces as well as the spacing for this rod here. Once you put these here, the spacing from the end of the element over there to the center of that bolt in that bracket right here is very important also uh, to make this really work as good as it does. So uh, those were what I've measured so far. 
Uh, let me keep going here while the rain has stopped and I'll put the other ones together. So one important thing here is these must go inside and touch the boom and your adjustments pretty much you'll have to it's like 48 and three quarters inches from the center of that boom out to the end of the loop so i found that i had to make adjustments like here i would put the uh you know i had pulled this out a little bit this wasn't so important here um as it was the adjustment here to get the end 48 and three quarter inches and also again with the spacing between each one of these you want to make sure that cap on the end is taken off because the length between the elements the spacing is is from the end of that boom tube to the beginning of the bracket and if you have that boom tube on that's going to add like six inches to it um, with the rubber so make sure that is uh, calculated right there so I'm going to put the other side together on, on the, the loop uh, driven element here. And I don't have much more to go. So far I'm about an hour and a half into it uh, with the delay of the rain. So definitely didn't take as long as the uh, Cushcraft 2 meter. One thing to notice that now the manual does say this should be fed with a ballon. You don't have to, but I didn't take that into consideration. So I didn't purchase a ballon with that. But what you can do, there's two of these here that you'll put a nut and bolt in and I guess you'll slide this over instead of prying it apart because that will break. So I'm gonna take this back off, slide this over and it's gonna feed one side of the center conductor of the coax here and the other side the braid, the shield will go here. So that's gonna feed each side of the element or the loop and um, they recommend 12 turns at a six inch diameter of RG8U. I'm going to be using that messy and poloni coax that I got from MFJ at uh, Orlando Ham Fest because it's ultra low loss. So I'm going to be using that uh, when I get that stripped apart and uh, put on here. I'll make an uh, ugly coax ballon and I'll tie in the coax right here, uh, that messy and poloni. If you're not going to use the messy and poloni, make sure you use something good low loss. Um, I could either use that or I have some RG214U and I have some uh, LMR400, so I'll figure out what I'm going to use. All right, so in still raining, um, I did get it put together. A couple little mishaps that I chose. I didn't inventory my parts correctly. I put two reflectors here on the wrong uh, driven element or director over here. So I got it all squared away. You want to make sure you have these mapped out so you know which ones go what. Normally on a Yagi like this or any Yagi, the longest one is at the end the reflector and then it gets gradually smaller to the director. Um, the measurements are critical so make sure you follow the measurements and because it's raining and uh, it's about to get another nice rainstorm here um, I'm going to end this video now but the next part you'll see will be the next day when I hook up the feed line to the loop to the uh, driven loop there and, um, and get it up on I gotta get my two meter antenna down and uh, I'll put this one up. Now, I can do some tuning. I'm gonna wing this one. Just the way it's measured, I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna throw it up there instead of putting it on a tripod, and we'll see what the SWR looks like uh, with it up there. Um, no extra parts other than a couple of the screws and bolts they gave me for extra in case I lost some. I just gotta put the U-bolts on here, and uh, that didn't sound good. And uh, we'll go from there. So I had to just come out here in the rain again and do some more work and now the rain has stopped. Um, so remember I told you about feed point. Here's what I did, let me zoom in. All right, so I kind of split the coax. I have 12, roughly 12 turns, roughly a six inch diameter for a coax ballon that's zip tied to it. And I put the center conductor of the coax here what I did on the shield, because of this messy and polony with the foil and all that, what I did was I took a piece of copper ground wire and laced it in with the braid, and then I taped it up. So I don't have the braid, which would be a little more brittle, on that. I have just a, a piece of solid number 10 copper wire laced in with the foil and the shield, soldered a couple times, and then taped up. And I picked this up off the ground. I had to wipe reading the analyzer while I held it up and just holding it in my hand above my head 
the SWR at 50.130 was 1.2. Now we're going to see what happens up on the the mast, and um, hopefully it's in the ballpark without having to tune. All right, so here it is up. I put this up myself uh, in the rain yesterday. It's been raining. I got about five inches of rain in the last three days since I started this video. So here is the four element on top loop fed array, loop fed antenna, whatever you want to call it. Um, so underneath is my Cushcraft 13B2. And the best I can do is put that thing just above it. Um, there's not much space in between, but I should be all right. It might affect the pattern a little bit, but you see here, let me zoom in, I got the coax barreling up here. Direct to the feed point, that's 12 turns of coax and a six inch diameter. And uh, got it on a rotator. So now, uh, part one of the video, I'm just going to check the SWR. I did adjust that loop up there, the, the driven loop, and uh, got it flat at 50.125. It's actually flat from 49.9 to 50.150 or something. That starts going back up. Um, so let's go inside, take a look, and then today is Thursday. So Saturday, two days from now, uh, the contest, VHF contest, and I'll show you couple other videos if the bands are open and I'm making some good contacts on this thing. What I have noticed, again, is this thing with the design, as I said before, it uh, reduces the noise off of the lobes. Now with the power lines over here, uh, it seems that off the back side and the back corner, it nulls out the noise. Because I'll show you, when I turn this north, the noise comes up from the power lines. So I guess off the back side and the back uh, back corner, it does null out the uh, the noise. I just have to show you, it's raining again, but look what my what my Davis says. It's raining cats and dogs. Five inches an hour at that rate. So this is the direction I'm facing right now, just for an example facing uh, north northwest or west northwest uh, if I move this I'm going to rotate it now to where um, you can see the noise comes up from the power lines right so listen listen carefully just facing north would mean um, I'm just about just off the edge of the front lobe from that power line now if I turn it back toward the west so that I'm off the side and the back side I should get quieter okay. so it is uh, getting some of that noise off there it helps me out with those power lines that I need to get fixed Here's a weird phenomenon that I'm trying to figure out and I guarantee someone can comment and educate me. So I put the antenna up and now my analyzer shows me right around 50.125, as close as I can get there, that the uh, SWR is 1.6 to 1 and the feed point, or the impedance rather, is 32 ohms. Now. Uh, that I'm, I'm guessing this might be have something to do with either a the ballon that I made instead of purchasing or the uh, distance between the two meter antenna and the six meter antenna because it's shown me about 1.6 to 1 SWR even down at the very bottom of uh, six meters it's showing me 1.7 now I'll show you here on the radio. My radio is showing me a one-to-one -one on the SWR with 100 watts out. So uh, I'm guessing maybe that it has something to do with my configuration and uh, why there's not more of a dip. Let's take a look at the radio. Okay, so the radio, the scale I'm looking at, the top left scale, right now I have set to power output at 100 watts, CW carrier, 100 watts, okay? 
exactly 100 watts output. Now when I switch the meter to SWR, I have one to one. Even down, if I go down here to the uh, low end of CW, we'll go all the way to 50 megahertz. Oh. Okay, here, 50.005, one to one, all right? So I'm guessing maybe the analyzer is seeing more uh, with the impedance and all that, and the radio is just happy because it's looking for the SWR. Now, if I go up here to 50.2, I have two little chicklets here, so that looks like 1.3 to 1 at 50.2, whereas the analyzer set out was 1.9. Um, anybody has any idea, you can comment below and, and uh, educate me on that. But as far as I'm concerned, my radio is happy and I might be checking into that Balan now and possibly um, research a little bit on the space between those two if one's interacting with the other. That may be uh, a possibility. All right, guys, that's uh, it for now for this video. The weekend is two days away, the contest, and look at six meters right now in Europe, even from Europe to the U.S. U.S. is uh, a little bit of action today, but it's it's there. This is the time to be on six meters, and uh, I'll have another video about six meters here shortly, but stay tuned, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the antenna, and uh, like, comment, thumbs up. Hopefully you're interested in my channel, and hopefully this uh, video has brought some interest into 6 meters for you. If you like my, con my continued effort on YouTube, consider a small donation so I can bring better material to you. Any donation would help. Thanks for watching, 7-3, and uh, we got some more coming your way from KJ4YZI.